<laughs> All right. Well, good morning. I, I, I get that. Yeah. Good morning, everyone. Uh, thanks for coming this morning. And uh, this session is about delivering great tri client training uh, through video. And so that's what we're going to talk about today. Um, I'm happy to the uh, I think the session title was a little misnamed. I'm hoping you're not here to learn how, how to train your clients. This is how to train your clients using video as developers, designers in your normal workflow. So hopefully uh, we're going to meet those needs this morning. I thought I'd start off with just a quick video that I created for OS training and uh, about Joomla uh, in the software that I'm going to recommend today. So we don't have speakers, uh, but I'll turn it up as loud as I can. So that's, uh, that was just a quick video that we created uh, as uh, part of our Joomla promotion on OSTraining.com. Uh, and the software to do that is $99. You don't need Final Cut Pro. You don't even need to be really good at it uh, to, to do what I just did there. Uh, that is probably the high end of what I'm going to talk about today. The low end is the kind of thing that you can do during your own development cycle to give clients the video training that they need. Uh, and I'm going to talk about a whole bunch of stuff. So here's where we're headed. Uh, again, my name is Rod Martin. Uh, I, obviously, I normally go through this whole intro thing, but if you were in the keynote last night, so I just thought I'd share a little bit more. I love coffee. Uh, I love, that's deep dish pizza from Chicago. I'm the guy that takes all the pictures of their, that takes pictures of all their food wherever they eat and puts it on Facebook. I, those people are so annoying, aren't they? Thank you, I'm one of them. Uh, when I posted that on Facebook, somebody said, that's the weirdest looking cheesecake I've ever seen. I said, dude, it's pizza. And I actually ate half of that. Uh, I was, oh my goodness, I was so sick after. And, uh, but it was so good. Uh, this is, um, I was at DrupalCon in Denver last year, and this is veal tongue. And, oh my goodness, that was good. Uh, I posted that on Facebook and a friend said, I make it a habit to never eat anything that still has food in its mouth. So uh, anyway, that was fun. Uh, this, is, uh, uh, this is my cat. Uh, we have seven cats, three dogs, uh, 20 chickens. We live out in the boonies uh, outside of Cincinnati uh, in a town called Dillsboro, Indiana. Uh, she fell asleep while I was reading Harvard Business Review to her in, my, in our garden. But uh, uh, yeah, so that's, that's just a little bit more about me. Um, I've created over 300 of the online training uh, lessons at OS Training. We have over 1,000 now, and uh, that's it for the commercial. I mean, OS Training helps sponsor me here, so I, I got to do a little bit of the commercial. But um, uh, I do work for them full time, and a lot of the experience that I've had in the last three years and what I'm going to teach you today is a result of what I've done at OS Training. Um, I own a company called Navigate Tomorrow. 
And when you go there, you'll notice right away that it's not a Joomla website. Please don't, you know, uh, label me a heretic. It's a Drupal website. Uh, I teach WordPress, Joomla, and Drupal uh, in rooms just like this. And so I have a Drupal site that I use for demos, and that's my Navigate Tomorrow site. I, I manage about 30 Joomla sites that I can go to to show people the back ends of Joomla. And my blog, imrodmartin.com, is WordPress. So we're, I kind of keep my hands in all of it. But we've created, uh, for clients, well over 100 Joomla sites starting with 1.0 several years ago. Uh, we're creating a 3.x now. Um, and so now that I'm full time with OS training and, and I'm a part owner of that business, uh, this has kind of dropped off in the last two years to the point where we only do about three projects a year. Uh, but of course, as I mentioned, I'm full time with OS training. I'm the director of online training currently and actually moving to uh, the director of live training in the next few weeks. So we're here to talk about how to do great client training with Joomla. So this is where we're headed today. Uh, we're going to talk just a little bit about an introduction. Uh, and then I'm going to cover the why, the how, and the when. And then I'm going to make sure we have time for questions because I find that most people uh, have those. Well. I don't know about you, but when I create client sites, the worst part for me is the documentation. I hate documentation. Uh, and here's why. We, we, we really suck at documentation, most of us, right? Um, I, I, that's the least favorite thing that I do. And most designers, developers, and site builders aren't very good at it at all. So I came up with this idea a number of years ago that instead of writing documentation for them, I'm going to make videos for them that I can put on their website and they can refer to any time. Because we all know what it's like, right? We get this great site, we deliver the site, and a week later after the first initial training period, we get this call. How do I do, and then we get another call. How do I do, and another call. And you go, and after a while, it gets really, really annoying. Wouldn't it be better if the documentation just landed in, their client, in the client's lap when we delivered the site? Kind, kind of like this. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. Documentation that just lands right where you want the client to have it. <laughs> I love that video, I know. <laughs> so I'm going to talk about eight things you need to kind of pull together in order to do this uh, initially. So let's talk about what you actually need to create great client videos. Well, you need a computer and a microphone. Uh, I use a Mac, uh, but PCs are fine as well. Uh, you do need a half-decent microphone, so let me talk about that in just a moment. But honestly, that's all you need. This doesn't have to cost a lot of money. Okay? In fact, it doesn't cost a lot of money. Uh, so what you need, you need a half-decent headset microphone or a podcasting microphone. Uh, one of the problems that people get into when they make these YouTube videos is the audio is terrible, right? So this is a Logitech. You can't even buy this one anymore, which is too bad. But Microsoft, there's a ton of these kinds of headset microphones out there, right? Um, this is the Logitech one. I've used it now for three years. It actually is almost broken, so it's starting to creak a little bit. So I'm, I actually replaced it with a, a much more expensive podcasting microphone because that's what I do for a living. But please don't think you need to do that. You can get away with something for 25 even 30 or $40. One thing I would recommend, though, is you do get a windsock from uh, over in the States or in Canada. We call it Radio Shack, wherever you would go here. Uh, but they're two bucks. Uh, they're, you know, they're very, very inexpensive. Put that over the microphone, and that will stop a lot of the pops and the, and the hissing. Uh, and it also helps uh, with any background noise that might, that might pop up as well. If, like I have three dogs, right? and two kids, and 20 chickens. And it's, am <laughs> it's amazing how much noise chickens can make outside your window in the, in the afternoon. So uh, that really, really helps. Uh, you could go with something like this that costs 300 or 400. I think that microphone actually is about $900 US. It's very expensive. It's crazy stupid. Uh, you don't need to do that, all right? The key thing here is you don't use the microphone that's built into your computer, because they're just not well, you've, like I said, you've all heard the YouTube videos. 
And half of a good, in fact, honestly, two thirds of a good training video is audio. It really, really is. And you don't have, so you don't have to have a great mic, but you do have to have something better than the built-in microphone. You need some kind of desktop capturing software. Uh, on the Mac, that's the best one is ScreenFlow. It's $99 US, so that would be about 79, 75 euros, uh, 75 euros. Uh, and it is awesome. Uh, that first video I just showed you a moment ago, that was created completely in ScreenFlow. Uh, I don't even use Final Cut anymore. Uh, in fact, ScreenFlow even now has a chroma key for green and blue screen. So if you really want to put yourself in it with a green screen, you can do that with ScreenFlow and it's just one click and it's done. It's actually pretty cool. So for $99, you get a very, very sophisticated uh, desktop recording software. I'm going to show you a demo in just a little bit. On the PC side, you're looking at Camtasia, which on the, they have a Mac version, but it's terrible. Uh, and it's also $300 US. Why would I spend that much? But really, on the PC side, you don't have any other option here. Uh, sure, you can use Windows Movie Maker. Please don't. Yeah, OK, it's, it's just terrible software. If you're going to do this and, and build, build the cost of this into your client work, uh, spend the $300 US, or which would be about 220 euros, uh, to get Camtasia for the PC. Uh, I, I do prefer the Mac solution, uh, partly because I'm a Mac guy, but partly because ScreenFlow is just that much better. But again, I wouldn't go out and buy a Mac just so you can make videos, OK? Unless you really want a better computer. No, I'm <laughs> I'm, I'm kidding. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. OK. Um, all right. So that's, the, that's all you need, hardware and software-wise. OK? You need a computer, a good microphone, and the software package. That's it. Because all you're doing is recording what's on your screen. So how do we get ready to do this then? Well, we're going to mind our P's and Q's here. Uh, there, you're going to have to do some prep work in order to make this happen. You can't, generally speaking, you can't just sit down and start talking unless you've done this a lot. Uh, even, even after doing this now for three years, I guess I'm a professional at it. I, I don't consider myself a professional, but I get paid for it, so I suppose I am. Um, I don't even just sit down at the computer and talk uh, anymore. Uh, it, you have to do some preparation. So I think, number one, you need to know the client that you're building this for. And you need to take that into consideration. I have one client uh, call, uh, th that is a senior citizen's home in, uh, in the town next over from us. And they are complete technological neophytes. They are complete beginners. They can barely open a browser window. It's unbelievable. But why would they? They're all nurse practitioners and social workers. They're not web geeks, right? So when I prepared those videos for them, I went right back to basics. And I went very slowly. And I created more videos for them than I might for other clients. Because, and in fact, I'm glad I did now, because this, those videos were two years ago. And they're on their fourth administrator of the website. Unbelievable. Now, they keep calling me to come in and train the next person, so I don't mind, because I charge them for it. So feel free to have turnover. It's all good for me. Um, number two, know your own style. And um, and you know, on the videos that I train, where I train, I, I don't use humor. I'm not. Tr I don't try to be funny. I, I, I'm just delivering the content, right? But do it in a way that's at least you know a little lively. Don't drone on and things like that. But that that comes from you. If you're not a upbeat, fun person, don't try to be upbeat and fun. If you're a matter-of-fact person, be matter-of-fact. That's what your clients will expect. Know your product. That kind of is a no-brainer, right? You're creating the site. Know the site. Make sure you're going to cover all of the bases. Um, and this is the big one, number four. Really understand and, and work hard with the client. Know specifically what areas you need to provide tutorials for. Uh, you know, Most clients don't need a tutorial on how to log in, but some will. Unbelievable. The problem is they have to log in to see the videos. So you know, <laughs> hello. Um, and number five, answer their questions. 
when I'm creating training videos for clients, I talk to them ahead of time and get a list of their big questions. Now, some of them, I go, once I've got those questions, I go, well, we don't need a video for that. I'll just write up a quick, you know, two paragraph thing. But, but for others, I try to answer their questions specifically. And I'm going to talk a little bit about how to do that as well in, at the end of the morning. Um, you need a quiet environment. Uh, again, with 20 chickens and, and three dogs and seven cats and two kids, uh, my environment can be noisy. Plus, my office is right about 20 feet from the road. But again, I'm out in the boonies. I'm out very far out of the city. So it's usually pretty quiet. But there's nothing more annoying than having a phone ring or your email chime go off or or a dog bark or you know some kind of noise in your in the middle of a training video so try and find a quiet environment number three do you need to write a script well it depends it depends on how experienced you get at this I find I don't need to write out a script anymore. I just need po bullet points. Here are the things I'm going to cover. Uh, but in the beginning, I wrote out scripts. Uh, sometimes, not all the time. I'm going to suggest you probably don't need to. Because you know your product. You know your website. Just write out the bullet points for the questions. Write out the question, and then write out the bullet points for the things you need to cover in your video, and then just talk over top of the screen uh, that you're recording. Uh, and I'll, again, I'll mention a little bit more about this in a bit. When I do uh, that video that I showed you at the beginning, actually, that was done on a teleprompter. I had written the script and edited the script. That's, a, that's very different than training videos. All right, so number three, recording. Uh, recording your uh, sessions is really simple. You start the software. You get your headset on, and you just basically work through the website talking about what they need to know. The great thing about this software, either Camtasia or ScreenFlow, is it records everything on your screen, it records your voice, and it records your mouse movement. And if you really want, it'll even record your face. Ugh. Don't do that. <laughs> well, unless you're really good looking. Okay. I don't do that, because I'm not. So you don't need to worry about uh, making mistakes. You don't need to worry about uh, having to go back and redo things. Just talk through your bullet points while you're doing the action on the screen, and everything gets recorded. All right? A um, little bit about that. With high-quality computers, and most of us have those these days, Record in full screen mode, and then shrink it later. And by that I mean, uh, on my 27-inch iMac at home, I record full screen, and then I actually bring it down to a more viewable port at you know uh, 1280, uh, 1280 pixels. Um, and what that does is it actually brings down the resolution and makes it very crisp and very sharp for the final product. On lower quality computers, um, well, even on my MacBook Air, I don't do this. But um, you know, if you've got an older computer, you can still do this. But just change your screen resolution to 1280 or even 1024. The problem with 1024 is, of course, someone's going to watch it on their 30-inch monitor, and then it's going to look pretty pixelated. So start big and shrink later is always better, uh, but record that full screen. Um, again, recording mobile is possible now. It's actually really, really cool. Uh, you don't have to use an emulator. Um, there's a $14, or no, it's, yeah, it's $14 US, so 11 euros. It's Mac and PC, and it's called Air Server. It, so you basically install it on your computer, Mac or PC, and then you use your iOS device and basically just use AirPlay. So I'm going to try this. I don't know if it's going to work with the crazy wireless in here today, but we'll see if it does. And it doesn't look like it's going to pick it up. No, nope. OK. Yeah, well, it was working earlier until I had to, I had to switch to the localized network. It doesn't look like it's going to do it. One moment, please. 
Yeah, let's switch the network out. Just a sec. Live demos are great, eh? <laughs> no, they've blocked the port, I think. Well, basically, uh, uh, do you know what AirPlay is on your iOS device? Okay. Uh, this is so cool, I wish I could show you. But essentially what happens is your, your screen gets mirrored to your computer, and your recording software can record anything off of your iOS device. That's how I did the uh, Guggenheim uh, iPad demo in that one video. Uh, and it really, really is cool. It's better to do it that way, because then you can still talk over what you're doing on your iPhone or iPad and have it in your video in full res. And it's not an emulator, it's real time. Uh, and I've had clients who really, really appreciate that. Use your natural voice. I love this part. Uh, because I don't know what happens to people when they get on camera. People who, who are normally fairly you know, well-spoken and gregarious can have a conversation. They get on camera and it's, hello, and welcome to my training video. <laughs> I don't know what happens. I've, had a, I've, I've shot video on client sites where that's exactly the thing that happened. So get over yourself for just a second and just talk. Use your natural voice. Now, don't speak too quickly because, again, people have to listen and try and follow. And so if you're naturally a quick talker, maybe slow it down a little bit, but just use your natural voice, which, again, is kind of weird because you're talking to a computer screen and Hal isn't talking back. This is the big one, uh, and this is probably the biggest mistake that most people make when they start. Keep going despite the mistakes that you make. So if I'm working through a training video on JCE, and I hover over a button, but I call it the wrong thing. Simple mistake, right? I'm not going to stop the video recording and start all over again, because that's, that's just a lot of wasted time. What I normally do is take about a two second audio break, and I'll say, whoops, made a mistake, edit that out, make a two second pause, so when I look at the audio track later on, I can see that flat line and go, I made a mistake there. Quickly scrub to it, chop it out, and if I haven't moved my mouse, which I don't, uh, I can just start right over again, right? So again, uh, so if you hover over this icon, the image manager will pop up, and I hovered over the quote icon. So pause, move my mouse. So if you hover over the image icon, and then later on, it's really easy to chop that wrong part out. And I'll show you that in just a bit. So keep going despite the mistakes you make. So your initial recording might be 20 minutes, and your final product might be five, if you're really bad at it. <laughs> Trust me, you'll get better. All right. Um, recording your camera. This is what it looks like. Uh, nah. <laughs> now, I said that at the Joomla World Conference, and one of the guys in the back made a really, really good point. Sometimes it's not a bad thing to put yourself on camera. And, and we talked about that for a little while, and I, you know what? I tend to agree now. Um, maybe an introduction video where you've got yourself in the corner or even full screen, but after that, no. No, don't. It, it's good to connect with your clients. Um, and the case in point here, this, this, uh, uh, this uh, senior citizens complex where I created the videos two years ago. And uh, they've had four new administrators since. If I had put myself in the intro video, it would have probably helped a little bit in the overall continuity of training these new people. Uh, but honestly, um, there's a company that does Drupal videos called Drupalize.me, and they do that approach where the person is always in the video, and I find that incredibly distracting. Um, I'm trying to watch the screen to get the content. I don't really want to see you. So although ScreenFlow and Camtasia support that, I would turn that feature off. Now, this is a freebie. 
and uh, I want to, but I do want to throw this out here for a minute. Using the same technology, you can do really amazing user testing. Uh, now, there's online user testing that's actually pretty cheap these days, but if you have a, a Mac or a PC with a camera and ScreenFlow or Camtasia, you can do really good customer usability testing. You sit somebody down in front of the computer turn the, and turn ScreenFlow on, and the only thing that tells them they're being recorded is that little green light. Back in 2004, we won an award for a website that we were working on, and we had done some pretty extensive usability testing. How many of you have done usability testing? Okay. Well, this is how we did it back then. Had a big table with a computer and a camera over the back end of the person sitting down here, and a camera over the top looking at them so we could get both angles, because ScreenFlow didn't exist back then, right? Get both angles and a microphone. Unbelievably. How many of you really want to sit in that environment and do stuff, right? <laughs> we did a, I did a site, a project for a, um, a very strange website that was, it was called the DougAndJohnShow.com. They, they don't exist anymore. They had about a four year run with their site. But when we were setting up their site, they had wanted a particular navigation system that I knew wouldn't work. And so I said, let me do some usability testing. The, the site was aimed at 12 to uh, 13 to 17 or 18 year old teenagers, both, but mostly guys, but, but girls found it interesting. So I grabbed seven teenagers and I said, and I brought them into a, a room one at a time, but all that was there was my laptop with ScreenFlow running. And I said, now, here's the list of things to do, and I just want you to talk out loud, and I'm going to ask you some questions at the end. So we did that, and they worked through some of the tasks that we gave them. The screen recorded it, the camera recorded their face, and the audio was recorded. And at that point, I just used the, in, the, uh, the microphone on the computer, because this wasn't for training. When I produced it, I, in, I rotated the image of their face 180 degrees so their eyes matched the mouse movements. And, and then I produced about an hour long video on about the, the usability testing we did. Convinced them that they were wrong on their navigation, thank heavens, and we were able to process out what would be a better system for them. But using this software, 99 bucks and some pizza gets you usability testing right there. <laughs> That's a free. That's free today. So there are times where you might want to record your camera, but for your videos, I wouldn't. Editing your videos is actually brain dead simple for the kinds of videos that you're going to be creating. Get rid of all of the ums and ahs that you have. Now, everybody do this with me. You ready? Say um. um. Do you know how many times a day you say, um? Especially, yes, thank you. All together now? Um, OK. <laughs> Especially if you're doing training not in your native language. Now, I only speak Australian and Canadian. That's all I speak. You guys speak multiple languages, and I'm always impressed. I'm blown away, actually, that how many languages some of you can speak. Um, I learned French. I just said, um. I learned French in, up to grade 11, and all I remember is, où est la salle de bain? Which is an important one, right? <laughs> you know, But that's about it. Oh, and où est la, où est la cuisine? The kitchen and the bathroom. Uh, what else do you need to know? But we do say um and ah quite a bit. In your training videos for clients, I don't think it's critical that you remove all of them, because you'll, you will sit there especially in the beginning when you're learning them to do this and playing with it for the first few times, you'll say, I'm a lot. They're not going to worry about it. As you get better at this, you'll see, you'll see that there will be less ums and ahs. And you might want to get rid of all of them to give a better flow to it. But I don't think you should get rid of all of them because honestly, you'll spend a lot of time editing if you do. But that's really your comfort level. Remove any key mistakes that you make. And again, so if you're going along and you click on the wrong thing, and it takes you to the wrong page completely, and you go, whoops, sorry about that, chop that out. And it's as simple as get the in point, get the out point, 
Control or Command Delete, and it's gone. In training videos, where there's a little bit of a jump like that, that's not as big a deal as if you're producing a professional video. So get rid of those key mistakes, because you don't want to take your clients down a pathway that's wrong anyway. Images, insert where useful, but keep them to a minimum. Uh, logos, if you've got a logo that you want to add, put them as an overlay, but then get them off the screen. Uh, using images uh, is helpful sometimes, depending on what you're trying to teach. Uh, some of those images in that original, some of that part of the original video I just showed you, some of that is just pure images, but most of it's just desktop recording. This is critical. Three to 10 minutes max. Your clients can't sit through a 30, 40, 50 minute video. There's one exception to that, and the exception is if you're sitting with a client and you're doing training, live training with them. I was in Safford, Arizona not so long ago, and I sat there and did two hours of working through their website with them. Okay, we're sitting next to each other, and I recorded the entire session, which I'm gonna really recommend that you do. <laughs> this is awesome. Later on, I chopped it up into 30-minute segments, so four 30-minute videos, and I wrote up a little table of contents for them so they could jump into, in the videos to the topics that we covered. But honestly, I didn't have time to make three to 10 minute videos out of two hours of training, right? So if they wanted to look at some, one portion of it again, they could load the video and jump to the right spot. But generally speaking, this is what you need to do for a topic, three to 10 minutes as much as possible because after 10 minutes, people start their minds and they just can't focus for more than that, especially when they're just watching a screen recording. It's pretty boring unless you really, really want to know what's going on. Increase the mouse by at least two, to at least 200%. Because again, what's going to happen is they're going to take these videos that, you're, that you've created and they're going to blow them up to full screen on their 27 inch IMAX. And suddenly the mouse is about that big on the screen. And if, especially if you're moving it quickly, they'll have a hard time tracking it. So this is something I do on every video I create. The mouse goes to at least 200% so they can keep track. Um, I'm sure you've seen videos where you zoom in and out and in and out, and it's like, mm, 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 mm. you're basically ready to throw up about five minutes in. OK, so here's the rule. Zoom in on key areas. Uh, and where I do this is if I'm going through, say, global configuration, you can tell I've, I'm still a 1.5 guy. If I'm in global configuration and I'm going through each of the screens in the global config, I'll zoom in on the area that I'm talking about. Because again, most of the screen is empty space anyway, right? Uh, I'll zoom to the left side and then I'll zoom to the right side. And so I'll zoom in, shift, and then zoom back out. But what you don't want to do is zoom in and out a lot. Because uh, again, it's like, hey, it'll make somebody throw up all over their monitor. They'll sue you. You'll have to buy them a new computer. <laughs> um, export size. And this is always a big deal, too. Um, the largest screen size at OS training, the biggest screen size we have is 905 pixels, because that's our, that's our template. That's kind of how it fits into our template. If you're planning on ever putting these out to DVD, which, honestly, really, does anybody do that anymore? <laughs> but if you are, 1280 is where you need to be. Uh, for the resolution for that. Really, it's up to you. If you're going to load these up to Vimeo, which is one of the things I'm going to recommend, then you can actually export at 10, 1280, and Vimeo will take care of all of that for you. So really, it's, it's what your end product wants to be. But I wouldn't go anything smaller than 900 or 1,000 pixels, because again, people are not going to watch this in the little window. They're going to blow it up so they can watch it on their big screens. So that's pretty important. That's what I do now pretty consistently. That's the minimum that we do. Export formats. Uh, in ScreenFlow, there's only one format that you can export it to, which is good, because it's, uh, it's HTML5, uh, H2.64. Please do not do WMV or FLV or MOV files anymore. Uh, they're not web friendly. And I'll tell you, a lot of people are going to look at your videos on their iPads. They're going to set their iPad or their tablet up next to their computer, and that's where they're going to watch the, your videos. So you, you can't afford to use Flash anymore. Uh, so H.264 
2.264, and uh, basically I just use, on ScreenFlow, I just use the web format, and it takes care of everything for me. Uh, I don't even have to worry about that, and Camtasia is the same. All right, host, whoops, hosting, I forgot to do the, uh, the thing on that. Um, where do you put your videos? Two schools of thought here. Uh, I think, number one, you're not going to make them public on YouTube. Okay, good. That's a duh, right? Okay, good. You're not going to make public videos on YouTube for training your clients because they're proprietary videos. Uh, so you need to host them somewhere. You can host them on their, on their site, which is one option. And honestly, I do that a lot. It uh, depends on how much they're going to watch them. But I will either upload the videos to their site and use you know, one of the many, many video, pro, uh, video extensions or plugins. And I'll create menus on their site at the administrator level. So they log into the front end as administrators, and suddenly a menu pops up that says training videos. Uh, and then they've got them right on their site. And most people have unlimited bandwidth anymore anyway, so who cares? So that's one way you can do it. Uh, if you're going to do that, though, then you really need to pay attention to your export options. Uh, you need to pay more attention to your export options. Or, again, YouTube. Uh, you can have a private account on YouTube. I don't do that. I hate YouTube. I love Vimeo. Uh, Vimeo does, uh, a, I think, a, just a really fine job. I'm going to make a suggestion in just a minute, but you can get a free account at Vimeo, and I think you can still mark them private. I'm not really sure. Um, or Amazon S3 web services. Dirt cheap. Offline or uh, host your videos on there. And then just use the, the you know, um, MP4 remote plugins that you can then still embed them on your site. I've never used Dropbox. Is anybody, I've, for video, can you embed a Dropbox? Yeah, but you can't embed them. No. See, I like to embed the training videos on the client site. That way it's controlled and they can see them from their own site, gives them that little extra bit of comfort level. Um, but you can host them at Amazon, and it's pennies, just pennies uh, to have stuff there. Um, Vimeo Pro is $199 a year. So 150, 140 euro a year. What, what you can do with Vimeo Pro is basically unlimited uploads, uh, almost unlimited bandwidth, and private private, uh, completely private videos. And with Vimeo Pro even, you can say, I, I will only allow this video to be embedded on this site. And then you get the embed code for your videos in, and put them in Joomla. Um, this is what I'm using right now, Vimeo Pro. For $199 a year, it's worth it to me to have complete control over my videos, uh, not allow anyone to see them except my client that the video is for and pretty much unlimited storage. Plus, when you upload a video to Vimeo, YouTube, Vimeo, or Vimeo Pro, they convert it and make it viewable on every platform. So that's the value for me. For 199 US a year, that's a no-brainer to me as a developer who does training videos for my clients. So if you're going to do this a lot, if you're thinking that this is a solution you might want to use, um, that's probably my best suggestion right now. That gives you complete control and it's not very expensive. You just build that into a few projects and you've paid for it over the year. Cultura is an open source. Um, I've never used them. Uh, they have no pricing on their homepage, which makes me worried. So I don't even know how much they cost. I wouldn't use them. And my new favorite, though, is Wistia. Uh, this is not for what we're talking about today, but we're moving, at OS Training, we're moving all of our video over to Wistia. Uh, right, right now we're on Brightcove and we pay close to $10,000 US a year for hosting all of our video. Uh, we're moving to Wistia, which is a far better solution at a third of the price. We're very happy. And uh, I, during the Q&A, if, if you want, I can show you a quick demo, but I know we're running late. So uh, what time are we supposed to be done? 11? Okay. Wistia is, gives you absolutely the best analytics of your video. It's unbelievable what these guys do. Uh, and I can talk more about that if we want later. 
All right, so here's the big question that everybody asks me. How long is this going to take? Like, this sounds like a lot of work, and I'm already busy developing sites. It's going to take a lot less time than you think. Depends on your product knowledge, but I'm assuming that since you're building the site, you already know the product, right? So you don't, you're not going to need to do a lot of prep here. In our experience, about five minutes of shooting for one minute of footage is generally what I do when I'm doing an actual training video uh, for OS training, because I'm doing a, f a lot more editing there than I would for just a client video. Now, I'm not talking we're going to give clients you know, bad video, but I'm not going to edit my client training video like I'm editing the videos for OS training, because that's supposedly professional. People are paying money, a lot of money, to watch those videos. I want them to be the best they can be. For client training videos, I'm not so picky, and I've never had a complaint. Editing can be a lot longer, depending on the mistakes, graphics, transitions. A five-minute video could take well over an hour. But what I'm going to tell you is not for you and not for training videos. You don't need to spend that kind of time editing. And as you get better, you'll spend less time editing. Sometimes you won't need to edit at all. Uh, and I really think that you can get to that point once you get uh, a little bit of experience at this. How much is it going to cost? Well, we've already seen that the software and the headset is all you need if you've already got the computer, 150 US dollars, a lot less euros, of course. Or if you really want to get into podcasting and professional stuff, you can build a studio for about $1,500. So the, uh, one, one last thing that really isn't about this, but if you ever did want to do some better client training where you're in the picture, going all out. You can do blue screen, green screen, video camera, tripod, uh, a teleprompter with your iPad. You can get a free teleprompter software. Uh, and at that point, you might want to look at Final Cut Pro, although you don't need to anymore. ScreenFlow does all the chroma key that, that you can ever want. Uh, people go nuts with this stuff. But you can do some pretty neat video with white screen and blue screen uh, and put yourself So this is actually in my office. And I had, at, this, at this point, I was doing white screen video. And this is what I was doing for OS training. And uh, anyway, that's online. And I'll give you a link to it. It's not that great a video. But the cool part is, basically, it's white screen like those Mac and PC commercials. Remember, I'm a Mac, I'm a PC. Uh, this is a fantastic demo on how to do white screen video if you ever want to. Uh, and I'm going to give you all the links here at the end. This guy uh, basically has it set up in his kitchen. And it's really, really well done. He also has a $2,700 camera, which is nuts. Um, so you know what I'm doing right now? Uh, well, let me, I'll show you in just a minute. This is, you'll, you'll think this is crazy. OK, so here's the thing that's really critical. When do I do this? Well, you do it now. While you're developing your site is when you create your videos. So as you're installing JCE, turn the camera on and talk over the installation. And you've got a training video. As you're setting up Community Builder and talking about community or a user management or you're working through managing their users turn on the camera turn on the, the the screen flow and get your headset on and talk over the installation and the configuration of community builder you don't have to wait till the site's completed in order to do this so what i'm suggesting is work it into your normal everyday workflow and just remember to turn the screen capture on and talk. And you've got training videos. It, it really is that easy. Integrate video documentation into your development cycle. And by the time you're ready to launch, you've got 10, 20, 30 training videos for the client wherever they need to be trained. And that really is depending on the client that you've got. OK, so what about online, tra uh, online meetings with clients? Well. Don't waste that amazing time. Record them. Uh, there is a great program for Skype 
and it's called uh, Call Recorder. For Skype, it's $20 US, and it records uh, all of the audio and the video from your client meetings, as well as I think it records the desktop. If you share your desktop, it'll record that as well. We're using this software to do our OS talks, so let me show you one real quick. So this is what this software does. It basically splits the screen in half. You're on the left, they're on the right, and you've got client training. Uh, we interviewed Brian for our OS talks a little while ago. Um, online client training meetings don't need, uh, don't need to be available once. Wow, that is really bad grammar. I made that this morning before my coffee. I'm sorry about that. I added this, I added this slide this morning before my coffee. But, but again, the idea of when you're having a meeting, record it. This is a WordPress training I did in Safford, Arizona, but it's the same principle. I think it stopped. Did it stop? Well, it's WordPress, and that's the problem. Oh, it's, oh. Yesterday, did you, were you at Peter's present weird lightning talk yesterday where he just put the slide up for the screen? Up? I'm in the back row, and I, get, I, and I said, I think he put that presentation together in WordPress. And it was like, hello, 10 minutes of static. I, I don't know. Actually, that's only a seven-second video, but you'll get the idea. So I'm recording the, the screen on this computer, actually, and I was just talking into the, the microphone with the client sitting next to me. And that's part of that two hours of training that, that we did. So don't let those training moments go to waste either. Record everything. Uh, it, it doesn't take long. It, do, it doesn't take up a lot of your hard drive space either. Uh, one last thought. Do the documentation for what's unique. And then let the other services handle the regular stuff. Now. Let me put in a little bit of a plug for OS training, uh, if I could, because obviously they paid half of my expenses to get here. Um, we've got training in the beginner and intermediate level. So if you want, if you want to in, give somebody your client J, uh, training in JCE, buy them a month of training at OS Training for 25 bucks, build them for it, build it into your site, and they've got 30 days to learn JCE at OS Training. We do that. Um, there are other services as well. I mean, there's, got a, there's about a billion free YouTube tutorials on JCE as well, so go get one of those. Don't reinvent the wheel. Just do the stuff. The stuff. Do you like that technical term? Just do the stuff that's unique or hard on your site, on this site for your client. So I'm not saying you need to document everything. Just document the hard stuff or the unique stuff on the site and let other services handle the regular stuff. Uh, you might want to just put together a list of YouTube videos for all of the Joomla things that people might want to know if they're new to Joomla. I've not done that, but that wouldn't take long to do. Um, yeah, we'll skip that. All right, so some further learning. Telestream.net slash screenflow slash demos dot htm. Uh, I wrote three articles. Actually, I wrote four. I don't know what happened to the fourth. It's not there. Maybe they didn't like it. I don't know. I'll have to talk to Diane about that. There should be four articles in the Joomla Community Magazine on uh, this topic. And the, uh, the link is there. Uh, and again, I'll give you the link to, this, to the slide share in a minute. Uh, but you can get that one. Uh, and this is the link. This is the, uh, the link to the slide share for this presentation. So you can download that if you want. Um, and I'll leave that there. Questions? We've got about 10 minutes. Yeah. Sure. Yep. Um, in the software, let me bring up ScreenFlow. And what I'm actually, what I'll do, let's do this. This is how simple it is. Um, it's going to build from the built-in microphone. I'll even record the FaceTime camera, which, of course, that's kind of nasty. And you can record the computer audio as well. So click record. And it's going to give me a couple of seconds to get ready. And so let's go over to 
the Joomla Community Magazine site. So if you want to learn how to become a, an author at uh, the Joomla Community Magazine, you can click on that link there. You'll go to magazine.joomla.org slash author dash resources. And you can actually look at an article, if I could find where to click, there we go, about all of the questions that you might want to know. So how do I become an author? All right, so blah, 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 right? I stopped the recording, and here is the recording. And so let's go over to the Joomla Community Magazine site. So if you want to learn how to become a, an author at uh, the Joomla Community Okay, so that's, you have two tracks here. You have a FaceTime camera track, which also has the audio, and you have a screen recording track. If you had a lot, if you had the headset in, you would have a third audio track here. And so depending on the resources that you're using, you'll have a couple of different tracks. In ScreenFlow, and it basically works the same in Camtasia, all right? So I'm going to separate, I can separate the audio out, and I can just delete the FaceTime camera just by clicking delete. But it's still over here if I want to bring it back. So I actually, it's, it's non-linear and non-destructive editing. So I can always just bring the camera back if I want. Uh, I have a lot of options on audio, but I have a lot of options on video as well. So if I click on the video track, which is the screen recording, I can click here, add a video action, and zoom way in, just like that. I come over to where I want to zoom back out, add a video action, and reset to default, and so now, And if I need my mouse bigger, which I mentioned that you should, I can put it at 237% just like that. There's all kinds of options in here as well. And so let's go over to the Joomla Community Magazine site. So if you want to learn how to become a, an author, okay. uh, um, and there's tons, again, lots you can add. Um, I can actually do this. If I come back over to here and I actually make this smaller, I can do reflection and a shadow. I can change, there's color controls, opacity settings. There are video filters out the wazoo. And if I have, so if I've created a green screen video, there's chroma key built right in. Uh, and so let me show you one quick video that I thought was in here, but obviously I mustn't have pasted it properly or something. Um, I wonder where it went. Downloads, maybe? Oh, yeah, OK. So this is a video I created in, in ScreenFlow. There's no, no, this is all ScreenFlow. This is our welcome video when you sign up for OS training. We just wanted to say thank you. Our goal is to help you build great websites. You now have access to every video, tutorial, So this is, this is just screenshots in the background in ScreenFlow. I have a green screen in my office now, and I've got all the light because it's what I do, right? This is a one-click chroma key. I mean, it's just you put, it, you embed it, you bring it into ScreenFlow, click a button, and you're transparent. It's really amazing. Don't wear green, though, if you're okay. I, yeah, yeah, you got. Yeah, yeah, I know. I'm wearing the same shirt. This is my video shirt. I like blue. So, oh, thanks. Um, so, again, uh, you know, my studio uh, didn't cost a lot. Uh, I really went cheap. I used seven dollar lamp lamps from uh, Home Depot for the lighting. I mean, it's really ridiculous. Uh, but so, Camtasia and ScreenFlow do all of that for you, and it's very easy. There's lots of tutorials at Telestream.com or Net. Other questions? Yeah. yeah. White instead of green? Yeah, white, I love white, but it's harder to do well. It's much harder to light. Uh, and watch that tutorial from that guy. Um, okay. You, you, will need, you will need something like Final Cut Pro to, you, to do white screen. Because you, have, you still have to edit out the background. Because the screen is never right unless you've got really professional stuff. 
Um, okay, well, maybe you won't need that then. Uh, but for me, I, m well, you saw my, my setup. It was PVC pipe with a big white screen, right? I, I had to edit out all the background there um, to make that work. So uh, green screen is a lot easier to work with than white. But white is cool. Oh, it's beautiful. It really is nice. Um, I'm using my f iPhone 5 now as my camera. Okay. For all of that video you just saw, that was shot with an iPhone 5. I don't, yeah. iPhone 5 is a great camera. And it just sucks it right into my Mac really quickly. So I'm shooting all of my professional quote unquote video on my iPhone 5. I have a really nice microphone that's on a boom just above my head, but the camera is iPhone. So uh, you don't use the built in app, you use an app called Filmic Pro. And uh, it gives you white balance white balance and everything else. Oh yeah, something like that. Any of these little cameras these days will shoot HD. That's all you need. Other questions? All right. Well, I think we're done. Actually, we're over time a little bit. Sorry. So uh, thanks for coming out. Uh, I'm here all day. Try the veal. <laughs> thanks.